Card, or some people call it um, a what do they call it? I better go back to my I better go back to my list here. Flip fold gate card, but technically what it is is a gate fold, double folded, and then a piece sliced off. So it's it's very very similar, but it it looks really cool. It looks like we did a lot of work when it's super easy. So you're gonna find that out. So it's a flip fold gate card slash double gate card or double fold gate card. It's going to be easy, uh, fast, quick. It's a fancy fold card and it's going to be DIY and you won't need very many tools to make it. Uh, a scoreboard, and if you don't have a scoreboard, go ahead and just grab your trimmer and a stylus or a phone folder or the, you know, the dull end of your scissors, whatever you got. And we're going to do, we're going to take off and do that. So let me just let bring us, bring us back down here. So I can say hi to everybody who's here with us live stream. Hi, Carol and Janet and Deb and Janine and Linda. Welcome. Hi, D. Oh, you got wrapped up on the Patreon site. Patreon started today um, a beta program where we can do live video direct on our Patreon group site page, whatever you want to call it. So that's really cool. So I gave it a shot today. Um, and so if you are a patron and you want to run over there and check that out, I think it literally posts for patrons only. I don't know that there was even anything I could click to change that. It's really cool though. Hi, Carlene from Florida. Oh, I love that little name. Fun life on a budget. Hello. Hi, Roxanne. And Pam. Awesome, awesome. So if you see somebody in the, if you're with us live, not archived, and you see somebody in the chat who's blue, which is Linda, um, they are our moderators. No problem, Linda. We're just glad you could make it. Um, hi, Deanna. And if you're watching us archived, then I want to um, let you know that you can skip through all this babble if you don't want to listen to it. Otherwise, if you are a part of the community and um, you like to listen to this and feel as if you're here with us, then by all means, you know, hang out. We'd love to have you. We'd also love to have you, and I'd like to invite everybody who is new or not new, maybe you just haven't made it over there yet, to the Quality Crafts group on Facebook. Now, there's a difference between a page on Facebook and a group. Um, I do have a Quality Crafts business page where you can check out what's going on and um, things that I'm doing, and I post all my videos on there and stuff like that. But then there's also a group which is drama free and commitment free. There's no participation police. You don't have to worry about any of that. You can, you know, post if you wish or not post if you wish, and you're still invited. So there are three questions you need to answer to get in. So make sure you answer those questions because otherwise we're gonna have to click the little button that says, remind so-and-so to answer the three questions. And it's just gonna delay getting you into that group. So I just wanna remind you of that. A couple of different ways that you can get my attention on here if you have a question while we're creating today. Um, one would be to just type everything in caps. If I don't see that, you can type the little at symbol and then my name, Jen Evers, after it and it pops it up in a bright green or bright orange uh, rectangle that I can see on my end. Um, or you can do the super chat, which is a little dollar bill symbol underneath where you type your comments and that is that will allow you to do a one-time pledge of whatever amount you decide and it'll bump up your name and your pledge in whatever you want to type in there your little note um in a bright color for everyone to see and that one's really cool so um those are three ways to get uh your 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 comments or your questions noticed right away hi cynthia and glenna good wishes from rhode island wow and we've got Monica from Minnesota. Oh, bummer, D. Yeah, we're coloring ice cream cones tomorrow. So if you guys are around um, during the day, I'm going to be doing my coloring video at 11 a.m. tomorrow instead of in the evening. 
just mix it up a little bit. We're going to be coloring these cutie little ice cream things. Now, when you get this one, and I guess you had to choose from a bunch of them because I picked this one, the eyeballs are completely just plain white eyeballs. There's no iris in it. There's no pupil in it. You have to make the eyeballs what you want to make them. So that's really interesting. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to color this tomorrow if you're interested. It is a monthly blue bowl uh, progressive challenge image and I do every one once a month about halfway through the month or so. So if you're ever looking for um, coloring tutorials, I will probably be using alcohol markers called Ohuhu's and maybe mix that in with a little bit of Spectrum Noir. Hey Kelly, I'm glad you could make it. Hi Cynthia and Sherry. We're going to be making these today actually and I always start at five minutes after the hour for the hour long ones. So Thursday evenings from 6 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And people always ask me that and I always say it's Central Standard Time. <laughs> and then Sundays it's always in the afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Wednesdays I do a 10 minute card so join us for that. That's usually at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Hi Raggedy. And Deb Spoonoggle. If I'm not mistaken, let's bring up our patron list. I'm pretty sure Deb is one of our newbies. Let me just check this. Yes, our awesome patron list. We have Deborah Miller, who's a VIP patron, and our newbies. Deb Spoonoggle, Julie Prince, Sharon Nichols, Ginger Whalen, Stephanie Struthers, Heather Edwards, Michelle Johnson, Jill Lucas, Sherry Ebersall, Cindy Pohl, and Hadassah Doremus. So, thank you guys. To all of our supporters on Patreon, if you guys want to join in to fuel the passion here on Quality Crafts, uh, Jen Evers' <laughs> YouTube channel, you want to go over to patreon.com backslash Quality Crafts, and you'll see a little video there that tells you a little bit more about it, and you can decide what tier level would be right for you. And if that is not something within your means to do, no problem. All the videos here on my channel and as well as my regular community group, Quality Crafts on Facebook, is, always has been, and always will be free. And the whole point of it is to reach everybody from beginner to advanced, make sure that I'm putting out content that's of value and exciting and teaches you um, how to do fun and uh, just interesting paper crafting techniques that maybe you didn't already know. So, oh, hi, Lorena and Cynthia and Sandy, Linda Landis. Hi, guys. So we've got one more minute and then we're going to begin. I've made two of these cards ahead of time. This one I put on, um, it moves because I put it on a couple of brads. And I didn't connect the other side, obviously, because the card opens up like this. Super cute, right? This one, I cut all these little pieces apart and stuff and, and did it all up, you know, glued these pieces on. And we're not going to do this one. I'm going to show you an easier way of doing that. So if you have your double sided paper, do you see how I've got flowers on one side and this pink on the other side? You want a double sided pattern paper today because that's going to make your card that much quicker to make. So when you're done with it, it's going to look like this and you hardly had to do a thing and you're going to get this fabulous two tone card. And then I just used um, this Stampin' Up flower punch. If you don't have this one, grab any kind of flower punch you have and some kind of a circle in a sentiment stamp. So for today, I am using the Just Saying sentiment stamps, and I'm going to do this one that says, Thanks for making my day. Right here, we're going to be stamping that one today. So I think it is five after. We're going to get started right now. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and get that on a block right away. And then I'll tell, talk to you about the measurements and how to get this going. Um, if you want the measurements where you don't have to go through the video again looking for them, you can check us out on the blog. When I'm done here, then I will post um, an album over at Quality Crafts so that you can put all of your makes that you know look similar to mine, only they're going to be totally decked out and much more fabulous because I just know you guys. And um, I'll put an album over at the Quality Crafts group on Facebook so that you can post your makes in the same album that I put these in. And then I will also be posting a blog and I'll put all the measurements on the blog for you so you can find them really easily. Just give me some time afterwards to do that because sometimes I get distracted. Um, people want to talk to me afterwards. It's kind of a busy time. So if it's not up right away, it'll be up as, as soon as I can, you know, get to it afterwards. Hi, Eva. So what do we need to do this? 
neat card. Basically, we need a piece of paper that is, I think it's five and a half by 10, but I'm just gonna double check here. I'm using um, a scoreboard, but if you don't have a scoreboard, go ahead and use your trimmer. Oh, I, I lied, it's 12 inches. Five and a half by 12 inches. Well, let me slide it over here and down just a tad so you can see everything that's going on here. And I'll have to find my little stylus because I didn't leave it in here. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. All right, so this is super simple. Five and a half by 12, and we're gonna score them at two, four, eight, and 10, okay? So put your 12 inch across the top and score at two, four, eight, and 10. And I'm gonna do that one more time. 12 inches by five and a half, scored at two, four, eight, and 10. So you're scoring it, you know, two, four, six, eight, 10, but you're skipping the one right in the middle, which is the six. Two, four, eight, and 10. And then we're gonna just cut off one piece off of each side. So we wanna put a little mark. I'm, and it's easier for me to do it this way. So I'm gonna turn it this way and I'm gonna put a mark at two and three quarters. It should be half. So if you do yours at a different dimension, it's about, you know, it's half. So put a little mark there, two and three quarters. Okay, and then I'm just gonna flip mine over and put a little dent there at two and three quarters. And we're gonna cut those two slices off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut from this two and three quarters here, straight up to the second score line in. Then we're gonna cut from this little mark that we made here at two and three quarters, diagonally up from this side to the second score line in. Now you're going to be singing that all day. <laughs> sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. I'll, maybe I'll try to sing something else for you. <laughs> so this is where our uh, little trimmer comes in here. We're gonna use this line to line up those cut marks. So we're gonna put that little uh, mark that we made here. Whoop, I need to bring this up higher for you guys. Okay, so we're gonna make sure our little mark here now I think you can see. And we're gonna turn our paper so that the second score line in marks up here. Okay, so from that one to the second score line up there, and we're gonna do one little cut straight across. And we have that little triangle. Save that, because this is what's gonna make our card fabulous without us even trying. We're gonna flip this over, however you wanna do it. And now our little score line right there halfway up is on the top and our other line is on the bottom, but it's the same idea. We're just cutting off this top corner. So from that mark that we made all the way up to the second score line in, and just trim that off. And you should have two corners, and I'll move this up, get this out of the way so you can see exactly what this looks like. You'll have this like sort of a house frame thing with these two corners cut off diagonally. Okay? All right, and then, you're gonna fold these sides in. There's my bone folder. Give that a nice crease. And then fold the next one out like this. Give that a crease. Now, if you're looking at this and you're going, oh, wait a minute, I I kind of wanted more of the flower to show. I, I, didn't, I might have done this wrong. Just go ahead and flip it over and then fold and fold back. See how that is different? Now most of the floral is showing just a little bit of pink. So you have to make up that decision. And I really want like more of the, more of the pink and a little bit of the floral. So I'm gonna just go ahead and fold mine in and then fold the last one back. Oops, I just kind of folded that one over. I wonder why it felt funny to me. So you should have both of your arms here should fold in, you see that? And then back on itself like that. Hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. We're gonna take these two pieces right here. We're gonna flip them over and we're gonna put them right here. Let me grab my other one, make sure I'm doing this right. Yep. 
I'm wondering, I'm wondering how that would go if you decided to do the other way. If you decided you wanted to do it this way instead, I think that would be just fine. So you guys decide how you want to do that. If you want to do it up like that or down like this one. Do you see the difference? I think either way would work. It's just it's going to change the outside look of your card. So instead of there being like um, a parallelogram here, there would be a triangle here. Yeah, so you guys decide. I'm going to stick with, stick with mine the way that we did this one. So that means I need to put it, you got to make sure you got them on the right side. There we go. And I like to use wet glue for this one. So I'm going to use my little glue bottle. And hopefully my pin comes out. There we go. Now, there is one little tricky thing to this. I think it's tricky, you might not. It's the fact that when you put paper on top of paper where it folds at some certain space, it doesn't always fold perfectly. So I'll show you what I mean in just a second as soon as I get. My glue is not coming out of there very well. So you're gonna to wanna to line this up along the second score line here and then line that bottom part so it matches up with this. And if you notice that, yeah, see when I lifted that up, now I'm gonna go ahead and fold this and put some pressure on there and really make sure that that sticks down because it makes a, it pops up here. So then I'm just gonna give that a little push too. And that way we've got that so that it'll move with the paper. But it leaves a little bumpy edge right there in the middle. Don't worry about that. It won't do that probably as much if you didn't have such a thick cardstock as I'm using. If you use like a pattern paper that's real thin, like typing paper or printing paper, you probably won't have that issue as much as I do, but I'm using a, kind of a heavier cardstock. So let's give this another try with the glue here. I'm having a, there we go. I must have had something, a little bit of dry glue stuck in my little thing there. Uh, if you notice, all I did was just stick my pin in there and run the pin back and forth until it cleaned up, cleared out that nozzle. So the same thing here, it just works better if you put it down, line it up with that score line and line it up with this bottom part and then fold it with the paper and make sure that it lines up and then give it a nice push there so it stays. And then bring it back over and push down that little part of the paper right here on this fold line that likes to bump up. Not a problem. So now we've got a fabulous, really pretty card, look at that, put together. And we hardly had to do anything to have that. Now on my regular one that I did for before I showed up here, I put a whole panel in here. Now when you close up the card, if you don't want this white sticking out the top, because it is really pretty having these patterns, you know, a pattern, what do you call it, like every other or whatever. So if you don't want that white sticking out the top, then just make sure that when you put your white piece in here, that you cut it down somewhat so that just that bottom part is covered. The purpose of the white basically, you know, is just so you have a place to write your sentiment. Hey, how are you? Missing you? Thinking of you? Um, you know, whatever you have to say to that person. So I'm going to go ahead and use the one that I have cut ahead of time. And it is a regular A2 size card four and a quarter by five and a half with a quarter of an inch cut off each side. So it'd be instead of four, um, four and a quarter by five and a half, it's four by five and a quarter. And that's this one, four by five and a quarter. And it should give you a little bit of, nope, that one's not cut right. It's not, well, it's cause it's not an A2 size card. Let's remeasure. Silly me. So it's already four, so we're gonna go three and a quarter. So I'll recut this one, we won't waste it. Three and a quarter by five and a quarter. So it's one quarter inch smaller than it normally would be. So let's pull this out and do three, not three and a quarter, three and three quarters. Did I, I said that wrong. Three and three quarters by five and a quarter. There we go. So it's just a quarter of an inch skinnier than an A2 size card. So it should still fit in an A2 size envelope. So I'm gonna use my ATG to stick that down. 
Thanks, D. Doesn't that look like a lot harder than it really is? I think once you get them done, people are like flabbergasted that, you know, you had all the talent and time to create something. That didn't, you know, it only took you a few minutes. And then to make something that goes in the front, this could be really literally anything. So I'm going to take some of this paper that I have on the side here. A green and a kind of an off pinkish sort of salmon color. I think the green looks the best. So that's the one that I'm going to cut the actual flower out of. Again, use whatever you have, whatever punches you have. If all you have is, is a circle. If you don't have any circles, you could cut a square with your trimmer. And a square on the front of this would be perfectly fine. And then I like to do um, a circle in the middle. And this one is a one and a half inch circle. And I'm going to do that out of the white cardstock I have here. So that I've got a white to stamp on. And then we're going to stamp that one that says, I can't even remember what it says. Thanks for making my day from the Just Saying Step stamp set. And you can get that one at the store, qualitycrafts.com. And then I'm just going to glue that right on there. Now that's a see-through stamp and I could have probably re-stamped this because it's not perfect, but I'm not, I don't really care if it's perfect. I'm going to be careful though not to touch that black ink for just a little bit because it will smear. So I'm going to clean up my space just a little bit here while we're waiting for that. Give that just a chance to dry. If you don't have time for it to dry, grab your homemade little stampin' buddy and just stamp some baby powder on there and blow it off and that should help. I love the smell of that. Makes everything smell so lovely. And then to put this on the outside, you're just gonna kinda go, okay, that's about halfway. And you're only gonna put glue on this half of the flower. Cause you don't wanna glue this shut or you won't be able to get it open. So I'm going to put some on these first couple of petals about halfway and then set this back down. My flower isn't exactly set up the right way, but I'm putting this up straight up and down by looking at the sentiment, not where the flower petals are. And if you want to do it like my first example that you saw in probably the reminder posts and stuff, you can use brads to hold this down too. So one brad is on this side some glue stuck on there. One brand is on this side and you would want to put it underneath this this panel that you cut um, if you're putting pieces down because the way I did it you can still see that uh, but it's not a big deal because nobody's going to probably open up the card and go oh look there's the brad end. <laughs> but if you do that and you put it on this side just know that you might have to cut some of it off. I literally had to use my wire cutter and cut some of it off because otherwise it was hanging off the edges of my flowers. So use smaller brads maybe of that kind of thing or do what I did and just glue straight glue half of it down okay and I think just to decorate this up because it looks kind of boring I'm going to put some little marks on the leaves with one of my markers just for the fun of it and this is totally optional you guys can go crazy and use whatever you guys have at home if you're not, you know, confident drawing freehand or whatever, that's no big deal. I just thought that this would look really neat. You could do stitching lines. I think that makes the flower pop a little bit more because otherwise it was just kind of blah. I don't like my cards too blah. And then on the other one, I had actually popped up some little um, teeny tiny butterflies with some little... Uh, colored pearls. So what I did was I took my regular white pearls and I took an alcohol marker like one of my ohu who is here and I just colored them up and then stuck them on so that they would match my project. So there we've got 
a couple of them. So do you guys want to stick around since we've got time and go over one like this where we kind of try to measure these out and see if we can't get some pieces on there? Um, I have not done that, so that might be kind of tricky for me. I mean, I took a long time to do this and like cut them all out and whatever, but we could make another one. Let's just try one. Let's do one. Let's see what we come up with. Let's let's do this one. Looks like I spilled some water on there or something. Let's measure this out and see what I have. Do I have enough to make another one? Because I can't remember. Oop, grab my card. I'm going to want that for the end. It is 12 by, oh, it's too long. We could cut off some of this. 12 by five and a half, I said, right? All right, let's go 12 by five and a half, and I'm gonna dig through my little thing here, and I'm thinking this paper would look really good on here. So let's see if we can just use some of this and just, uh, just flying off the cuff here, I'm gonna go ahead and just decorate this card up just for fun. Let's go ahead and try this and see what we can get out of it. Now, this part is totally unprepared. I did not make this up. Uh, we're just going to see what comes out of it. So two, four, eight, ten, right? Two, four, not the six, the eight, the ten. So this is a really easy card to remember too, as long as you remember that it's 12 by five and a half. It's just two, four, eight, and ten. And that's it. And then if we want to cut off the tops like we originally did, we're just going to turn this up and go at two and three quarters right there. And then I usually just flip mine over and do the other side at two and three quarters. And we're just leaving a mark so we know where to cut. Because now you guys are pro at this because we already did one, right? And then we're going to bring in our trimmer because we're going to trim from that halfway mark to that second full score mark in and that's going to give us a little triangle and then we're going to cut off this side going the other way so the second score mark in down to that halfway mark that we put in so that's there and this is here sometimes you have to toggle it back and forth because they move a little bit and then we've got that now it doesn't matter which way we fold these because this one is all one color. So if we fold this one in and then this one back, I'm going to open that up so that when we fold this side in, we can see the one that we're folding back here. My score marks were not super heavy, so I'm having to just kind of finagle this a little bit. And then we've got our folded card here, our double fold gate card, or our flip fold gate card. It's always fun to make DIY fancy fold cards when you don't need that special, you know, whatever it is, dealy bopper that you have to pay for, or template that you have to get. Um, a trimmer and a scoreboard and that's it. And truly, you probably could have gotten away with marking these and using just a pencil and a ruler. The scoreboard makes things just 10 times quicker, but it's not necessary. Now, because this is the same color, if we put this on where we did the last time, where we flip these over and put these on the inside here, that's gonna look kind of blase. So since we're flying off the cuff, I think what I'm gonna do is take these and run them through my embosser that's right over on my other table and we're going to put these on and then i'm going to use this paper that we pulled out from the scrap bin and cut down some other um pieces and see what we can get out of that and see what i can show you how uh, some tips and tricks on how to pull that off Alrighty, and here's my, hopefully I ran them through the right 
way up if you know get what I'm saying. And I'm using these we are memory keepers and I forget what the fancy name for them. It's like second level or something like that. Um they are pretty phenomenal. Look at what you get out of that. It's so cool. Just can't get this one to come off. There we go. And so now you can tell, you can still see where the score marks are, but now this one's going to go here and this one's going to go here. We're going to glue those down. These might, this might be a little tricky since our paper is going to be a little bit smaller because of what we've just done. I think, I think I'm going to use sticky tape for this to make sure that they stay where they're supposed to be. So how is the week going? Like, I, I know when I work, I'm always excited for Thursday because that means Friday is right next door. How many of you guys are so excited about the job that you have that you like literally can't wait to get up in the morning to go back and do it again? I know we're on a leg, so I'll give you a moment to think about that. How many of you guys are so excited about your job that you just can't wait to get up in the morning and go back and do it again? Because that's, that's how I feel about crafting. Not my real job, which is why I'm trying to make this into my real job. <laughs> so hopefully this will work out as well as the last thing we did. Because the other card that we did, we put it down with wet glue. There's a little bit of breakage because um, in the paper here on the edge because of me, you know, distorting it in the um, cuddle bug there, but that's okay. See, a lot of us just are not that happy. I think that they prepare us to think about we have to go to college and we have to do this and we have to do that, but they don't really prepare us enough for what do what are we really suited for i mean what are we really really passionate about i don't feel like we get a lot of that growing up like we should i love retirement too <laughs> i can't wait to get there someday I was going to sing, I wish upon a star song, but I can't think of how it goes. When you wish upon a star, blah, 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 blah. Na, 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 na. There we go. We got a little bit of weaving going on there. That's really cool. Now, how are we going to get a piece like that goes in here? so that it looks like there's another color in there. This, this is my idea for that. If you put it in there on that side, I'm gonna cover that side right there. I'm trying to match up the bottoms here. If you match up the bottoms and the side here, okay, you can put a mark here where you need it to end and then a mark right here where you want it to come down, and then you can trim that off. So I'm gonna bring my trimmer in. See if I can't find that little mark I just made. And I'm gonna trim that off, and then trim, where's our little mark here? I can't find it again, so I'm just gonna go ahead and, it's gonna be right there. So I just laid it over the top and now I'm bending it so I know where to cut the end off. Now here's the thing though. I'm gonna pull this up so that I can match this up. So I can have a flat bottom so this, this line doesn't go all kitty wampus. We wanna move this in like an extra little bit so that we have a little bit of a mark around the edge and then we wanna turn this to the side and cut just a little bit off this edge too, as straight as we can. I mean, if it's not perfect, nobody's gonna say anything about it, right? And it's going to go on the other side because now we've got that pattern there. 
We're just going to double check to see if that fits. Oop. And look, it does. It has a little bit around the edges. And that's what we want. And when you see that it fits on one side, then you want to go ahead and um, retrace this. But here's the thing. If we retrace this going the same way, then it's not going to... the the pattern side's not going to show up on this side, so I believe we need to flip this over. Flip that over and then cut it. So let's just see how good we are with a scissor in our hand. So one of the memes I like to give people at work when I'm there, it says, make a list of everything that you have to do and make a list of the things that make you happy and adjust accordingly. So now that we have that traced, right, we can flip that over. Oop. Did I do it wrong? Nope, I did. I did it right. Look at that. We've got one for each side. And that way we can cover that one up and we've got some extra flowers there. Cool beans. So that's a cheater way of doing it. You're just kind of eye eyeballing up and just using your um, stylus and stuff to create, you know, kind of trace it essentially is what we were doing was just basically tracing that shape and then cutting a little bit off so that we don't have to be absolute perfect at it. There'd be a little space around the edge. I like it that way. Um, you don't have to put a space around the edge. You could trace yours so that it fit exactly on there. But then I feel like that's too much pressure. <laughs> too much pressure. So let's see if we can get this on here. That looks good. And we'll put one on the other side. Yep, Hadassah, I'll be posting these afterwards. Like I said, um, we don't have a person to do the blog tonight, so that will be me. And just give me some time, because after I'm done with videos, um, I have things that I have to do, and a lot of people like to chat with me and that kind of stuff, so I get a little caught up. Um, and it might take me a little while after the video is done, but there will definitely be uh, all of the measurements and stuff, photos and things on the blog post. And that's jenscoalitycrafts.blogspot.com. So there we go. We're going to want a flower on the front too. And since this is quite pink, I think I can still get away with cutting this out of the flower. I'm just looking to see if I can get some fun colors on the outside of that. And then the white circle for in between. There we go. One and a half inch for me. And do I want to do the same thing? Maybe so, but I think I'm going to do it in like a dark brown. I have a dark brown right here. Strategically crafting. I like that. Carlene. Do we have a lot of people in here that have young children that enjoy potty jokes? Because I have a good joke for you. Or it's potty joke, and it's for youngsters, so you have to have that kind of sense of humor to enjoy it. So I'm going to glue this down on my flower, and I want to try to make it so that everything goes right down the middle, the flower too. So I'm just going to put it on there so I can look and see 
where it should be in the middle. That looks pretty good. Well, thank you, Cynthia. She says she really likes the colors of this one. I, I think the brown and that kind of paper really pulls it off because all by itself, I'm going to be honest, this salmon color, yeah, not my thing. But yeah, with this brown and these other colors in here, it's turned out pretty nice. Pretty cool. That looks good. Let's go ahead and glue that down. Pot body on. Go for it. Okay, so here's the joke. You say, you say, well, do you have Zachley disease? And then your kid says, no, or what's that? You say, I swear your face looks exactly like your butt. <laughs> you got exactly disease. Your face looks exactly like your butt. <laughs> oh, that's one of my favorites. Do you share it with your grandchildren if you don't think it's too too off the beaten path? This is a family friendly channel, so there <laughs> typically should never be anything that makes you go, oh that oh we can't watch Jen Evers anymore. What else do we want to put on here? I'm thinking we should, well, we got to do the white part inside, right? And we could cut some of that other, oh, you know what? We should have cut two more like these. We should have traced two more like that. We could have put two more on the inside here. That's okay. Oh, bad store coming through. Okay. Well, if we lose you, we'll know why. We could trace this. We could trace this and make another one. I don't know if I really want to, though. I don't really feel like it. Let's do um, a white inside, though, because I definitely want that. So this is a full A2 size card. And do we remember what we need? It is five and a half, so it's going to be five and a quarter. And instead of being four across, it's three and three quarters. So three and three quarters by five and one quarter. Let's see if we can pull this off. Three and three quarters by five and one quarter. All right, and we'll see if we got that right. Ta-da! Anyone know if the measurements for this card will be posted? Um, yeah, we just we just answered that not too long ago. Oh, she must have got kicked off. Can somebody just retell her that these measurements will? She must have. Yeah, she must have got kicked off. Um, the measurements will be posted on the blog afterwards. But please, please be kind. Because I'm going to be doing that, and it might take me a little bit afterwards to get everything up there. So there we go. And, you know, add some other stuff to that. we got a little bit of time, so I'm going to pull out one of my brown markers. Gosh, my nose is itching today. Pardon me. I'm sorry if that is like a, a trigger for somebody, but I can't help it. Here we go. we got a brown I think I'm going to do some stitching because I haven't done that in a little while. It would be helpful if this was just a little bit darker of a brown, but this is the darkest brown I have in that collection of markers, so we're going to go with it. That makes all the difference. Look at the difference between that side and the other side. So let's go ahead and do this side too. So if you guys have any kid appropriate jokes, I would love to hear them because this year I'm going to be back with my loves, the little kids in the elementary school. Oh, I've waited. How long have I waited for this? Three years to get back into elementary. What if you do some of your print paper on top of the white? 
on top of the white, like right here on the inside. That would look cool. What, do I have a piece that might fit in here? I do. Like a piece right here, because that would look really cool. Great idea, Sherry! Yeah, to add some up there would just kind of encapsulate the whole top in brown. But if we open it up and put a piece on the bottom, it's fabulous! Whoop, whoop. I didn't even know you could retract a message. Now we know that you said something that you shouldn't have, Sherry. <laughs> or maybe you just rethought about what you were saying. Cheers, my friends. Thank you for being here tonight. We've got 51 viewers tonight. That's really pretty. I like to look at that. Let's stamp the back. I have this stamp that stamps my logo and uh, information about my store and stuff. Let's see if I can get a decent stamp on here. I like to give time for that ink to transfer too because sometimes otherwise I get a really bad stamp with that. Oh, that looks really good. Forgot to blow it off to make sure there was no fuzz on it. <sighs> Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? Alrighty. Well, we are getting close to wrapping this up. Even though this one didn't even take us an hour because it's such a simple card. But we've got a couple of them made. So let me pull these back out and kind of go over a little bit of what we've got going on here. We've got a five and a half by 12 sheet of paper. Scored at two, four, eight, and 10. And then we just cut a, cor a, a corner off of each side down to halfway. So that was two and three quarters up to the second fold line. And then our white base for the middle was three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And then we just decked it out, right? So if we did it the traditional way, we took those two corners and we glued them right here on the bottom. And that gave us a fabulous two-tone card that makes it look like we worked on it all day and night. So don't tell them you didn't. Because they will be so impressed. And here's another one that we did. With a nice big panel for you guys to write in whatever you need to write in. I would, if it were me, um, maybe look, put a little bit of mark there. Or just know in your brain that you don't want to go too far past about two inches on the top or an inch and a half so that you keep your sentiment down here. That way when the card is closed, you don't see it hanging off the top. But it really doesn't matter. That's just my personal preference. So the stamp set that we used today, did I stamp that other one? I did. Thanks for, thanks for making my day. Thanks for being you. I believe in you. What's this one? Thanks for making my day. That's the one that we chose. And we took that from this stamp set, which you could get in the Quality Craft store. It's called, underneath my store, it's called Just Saying. But if you want to look it up elsewhere, it is um, actually called Round Frames. Round Frames. And you can't really see this too clearly because I have the auto, um, auto focus off because otherwise it makes everyone go crazy. 97635 Round Frames. But I call it just, just saying because that's what it says up here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that back on there and put this away. How long were you doing this before you decided to do that? 
Um, ask your class if they know why they have to wear sunglasses because they're so bright. <laughs> That's a good one, Carleen. I'm not sure if they'll get that one, but I love it. How long were you doing this before you decided to do that? I would love to answer that question, Vicki Rivera, but I'm not sure you're talking to me specifically or what you're exactly talking about. So I'm going to leave it alone. The logo stamp, um, I don't remember where I ordered that from, but it's a company that's got a little Z emblem on it. You see that? I can look it up. It's um, It was from an online shop. I did not buy that through Amazon. It was through some kind of online shop, and I just can't recall off the top of my head. So, ask me that in private message later on because I'm going to forget. I just know it. We got four cards here. Look at that. Super easy, super fun. I hope you guys will give it a shot. You don't need too many things to actually make it. And if you don't have any punches, you can just use um, squares and just cut them on your trimmer or whatever you have laying around. You can trace things if you don't have that kind of thing. Um, just super, super easy. Asking about making your own logo stamp. I did not make my own logo stamp. I, well, I chose what I want on, what I wanted on it and what, um, what font I wanted, that kind of stuff. And then they created it for me and shipped it to my house. So no, I've never made my own. That's for sure. So I think that's probably about it for today. Um, make sure you stop off at Patreon and check that out. See what that's all about. Join us on Quality Crafts at Facebook if you haven't already. Stop by the Quality Crafts store to see what's new. And there's going to be new releases in the Digi stamp department like every two weeks this fall um, and there's a lot of really cool stuff coming up so if you missed the back to school release go on over there and check those out those are super cute and I can't wait to see you guys next video